Hello everyone, welcome to Buy Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77. And the movie that I want to talk about, well, this week we're doing our label week, which is Arrow Video. And uh, this one I felt like I just had to do uh, for obvious reasons. But um, the movie that we're going to talk about is the first uh, theatrical film by David Cronenberg. Now he did, before this, he did a couple of uh, short films. He did Stereo and Crimes of the Future and things. But this was him, you know, getting his chance to you know, to write and direct his first major film. The movie we're talking about is Shivers. This is my Arrow Steelbook. And, uh, you know, it's like, this is one of the true gems of my collection. As you can see, it's autographed by the star of the movie, Lynn Lowry. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is a great movie. I really enjoy it. And this is a wonderful steelbook as well. As you can see on the back has the most iconic image from the whole movie. And, uh, for those of you who might not be familiar with it, um, yeah, uh, this movie is. I think this movie is very controversial, even still today. I'd, I'd be, I'd be interested to see somebody. Now, normally, I'm not really that excited when I hear about like you know, uh, 70s, 80s horror movies being remade. But I would be curious to see somebody try to do this one. Uh, like, hey, Soska sisters, you know, you're talking about you want to remake Cronenberg's movies. Try doing this one. I dare you. Um, the story is pretty interesting, to say the least. Now, the movie takes place in uh, Starliner Tower, which is a large kind of, at the time, is considered kind of futuristic um, apartment complex. It was, you know, in a, uh, it was like a little island off, is a little island off of uh, Montreal. There was like a, like a driveway bridge that connected it to Montreal. And this, you know, the beginning of the movie has this kind of slideshow, you know, kind of setting up, you know, where this movie is going to take place. And you find out that uh, Starliner Tower, because it is on an island, it's a it's a very self-sufficient facility. Um, they have like restaurants, they have uh, room service, laundry, you know, uh, post office on-site medical facility they have everything there you know so it's like it sounds like it would be a dream place to live and it seemed like it'd be very um kind of very hoi polloi kind of a place to live and then um at the very beginning of the movie you have uh this couple they're going to basically you know see if they can lease an apartment but it's it's juxtaposed with this scene of uh this young woman in a schoolgirl outfit she's you know being attacked this this you know creepy older guy you know he's busting in the room and and he's attacking her and strangling her and killing her and stuff like that but and that's the thing though too is like at the beginning of the movie because this movie does have multiple characters um there's there's a lot going on with all these different characters so you know the girl ends up being strangled and the guy you know takes her body and puts her on the the kitchen table and uh you know she's nude and he cuts her open and then he takes a bottle of acid and pours it in the wound. And, and then he takes a scalpel, he cuts his own throat, kills himself. Um, and then we're introduced to uh, uh, another character, uh, Mr. Tudor. And, you know, he plays into this pretty heavily. He and his wife, they play into it. Um, we're introduced to our main character, who is Dr. St. Luke, played by Paul Hampton. And uh, his nurse, Nurse Forsythe, played by the star of the movie, Lynn Lowry. Um, now they're running the on-site medical facility and people are saying like that they've been having problems, you know, they've been having kind of like stomach pains in their sides and, and they feel like something's like moving in, in their stomach. And so, you know, the doctor, he's trying to figure out what's going on. And at the same time, he's being, um, he's being contacted by, you know, another physician played by Joe Silver, who's, you know, great character actor. He was also in Rabid. Uh, he did the voice of um, the creep in Creepshow 2. He's done numerous things. And uh, he's, you know, hey, yeah, uh, I need to talk to you about this guy, you know, this uh, Dr. Hobbs. And then, um, you know, then uh, Dr. St. Luke, he's, you know, called up to the, the apartment where the old man killed the young woman. And then he found out that the, the old man is actually Dr. Hobbs, who, you know, the other doctor was talking about. So he goes and he sees Joe Silver's character and he's talking about like, yeah, he's all the thing is, is like Hobbes was working on this parasite and the parasite is uh, it's meant to be inserted into the body. 
Um, and then what ends up happening is like any kind of bacteria that's in your body, any form of cancer, anything like that, the parasite will eat it up. The only thing is, is like the, the, uh, the only like side effect would be that the, the parasite would take a little bit of blood for itself. But you know, uh, other than that, like anything that you had in your body, any form of cancer, any form of tumor or anything like that, the, the parasite would do away with it and you would have this, this parasite in your body, but it would be harmless. We find out, of course, that's not the case. And then uh, we find out that uh, Tudor, he went to see the young girl because it turned out even though he's married um, and his wife played by Susan Petri, uh, she has a best friend named Betts who's played by Barbara Steele. You know, Barbara Steele's in this movie, which leads to the most infamous scene in the movie. So um, Tudor, we found out, had been having an affair with this young girl. And it turns out, well, we find out actually that the girl was promiscuous to begin with. But what Hobbes did was he used her as sort of a guinea pig. He inserted her with the, you know, with the um, parasite. And then she basically went crazy. And she started just basically just having a lot of sex with a lot of people around the building. And so we're starting to find out that, you know, she started infecting people. And um, so anyway, so you got like uh, St. Luke. He's trying to, you know, figure out what's happening. Meanwhile, the nurse played by Lynn Lowry. She's, you know, trying to seduce him, but he's kind of, you know, he's kind of very prudish. He's just not really, you know, I don't know what it is, but he's just not going for, her. <laughs> you know, it's like, I think anybody else you're watching this movie, you know, if Lynn Lowry was trying to seduce, you'd be like, yes, very much. Yes. Thank you, please. But, uh, he's not going for it. But as the movie progresses and things like that, we find out that Betts, Barbara Steele's character is actually a lesbian and she's in love with Susan Petrie's character and she's trying to see if she can maybe, you know, bring her over to her side. But as the movie goes on, uh, more and more people are being infected. And then Joe Silver's character, he finds out that, um, that, uh, Hobbs was actually fooling people and that he, it turned out that Hobbs, I guess kind of a way to say it was Hobbs was kind of a guy who, uh, he kind of did this whole thing so he could get laid to be blunt about it. What it is though is actually is the parasite is actually meant to basically really boost up your libido. Um, it's supposed to make you just, uh, for lack of a better word, it's supposed to just make you super horny and you know, you just want to start having sex with anybody and everybody. So now of course, because you know, the, the star liner tower is isolated and like everybody's, you know, everybody's kind of trapped in this building. Um, then everybody starts turning into essentially sex zombies and it starts spreading and they're starting to attack people. And, and that's one of the reasons why I say, honestly, I don't know if you could even do this movie today because there's a lot of taboo in this movie. There's, um, there's homosexuality. Well, that's not really taboo anymore, is it? But you know, there's like incest, there's, um, um, you know, like I said, there's homosexuality, there's uh, pedophilia. There's actually a scene in the movie where this one person has their two kids, you know, kind of doing like a almost like a, a BDSM kind of a thing. They have their kids on leashes, you know, and the kids are barking like dogs and stuff like that. And uh, so the character, Dr. St. Luke, he's trying to, um, you know, the nurse, she's constant, obviously, because she's a gorgeous woman. She's obviously everybody's trying to attack her. So he's trying to save her. He's trying to save himself and he's trying to get, you know, get them both to safety and they're trying to get help, trying to get, you know, police to come there and everything. And, uh, <clears throat> so, um, you know, Dr. St. Luke, he tells Joe Silver's character to, uh, you know, to come over to the, the star liner and, you know, he has this patient, you know, which is Tudor, and he's all like, you know, this guy, I think he's really infected with the bug and everything. And so he's like, okay, yeah, I'll go there. And that's where you get pretty much the most gruesome scene in the movie because he goes to see Tudor and Tudor has like, you know, the parasites burn their way out of his stomach. And, you know, he's like, he's vomiting the parasites. It's pretty gross. And uh, actually um, in the interviews, David Cronenberg said that, that he felt that, um, that Dan O'Bannon was actually, you know, um, uh, you know, he was inspired by shivers for alien, you know, because of the, you know, the parasites burning out of the guy's stomach. And then, you know, that, you know, he felt that that could have influenced the chest burster scene and alien and things like that. 
and uh <clears throat> also too i think um wasn't the the name of the i think he said something along the lines of like the name of the the sh- something in alien was also named starliner or something like that i forget what it was but uh yeah he said that he honestly felt that dan o'bannon was pretty much influenced by shivers and shivers came out in 76 uh alien came out in 79 but um so anyway so yeah so the whole movie is basically just this character you know dr saint luke he's trying to avoid you know all these these sex zombies i guess you could say and you know it's just it's it becomes an increasing nightmare um you know but that's the thing though it's like you know some people now that's the funny part though is like with this movie whenever i explain it to people a lot of people think it's pornography and it's not it's a horror film um it just has a very strong sexual content in it yeah that's one thing though too i always get a joy out of this i think it's funny personally it's like when i see horror fans who are like oh yeah man blood gore dismemberment carnage bring it on can't get enough and it's like this has a lot of sex in it and it's like huh what (laughs) i tend to i I don't know that just tickles me but anyway this is a very intriguing movie it's very interesting this is i want to say this is probably the movie that really kind of started the body horror thing you know subgenre i don't know there i'm sure there have been other movies before this but uh, this movie it's it's powerful sauce it still works even today i think even today you could watch this movie and it would still be um it would still be pretty uh intense and it would still be controversial even today probably even more so because nowadays the way people are offended by everything but um in terms of filmmaking technique obviously this is um um this is a decent film okay it's it's well made enough but when you compare this to Cronenberg's later films, obviously, um, and Cronenberg himself admitted in the in the interviews that uh, he didn't realize until he got his, he got started making the movie, he didn't realize how in over his head he really was. Um, he you know thought, well, I did my short films. Obviously, doing a feature film couldn't be any different. And he tried for a long time to get the script uh, greenlit. Now the problem wasn't him getting the script done. Um, <clears throat> You know they wanted to do the script the problem was they didn't want cronenberg to direct it so you know he ended up uh you know he even went to roger corman at one point i think even corman did the same thing you know he said you know like well you know i'll buy the script from you and everything but the thing was they didn't want cronenberg to direct it but he finally managed to get a deal where with uh, the producers uh, uh andre uh, andre dunning and john link they would let him direct it and so they raised the money and he made the movie. And then when he started making the movie, he said like the first couple of days, when he saw the first uh, few days dailies and stuff, he was horrified. And he he's like, oh my God, I don't think I can do this. You know, like the eye lines are wrong. This doesn't match up. Everything like this is not going to cut together and things like that. And so, but the thing was, he realized what he was doing wrong. But then when he started going back to set, he was able to correct those things. And he's like, you know, over the time, the dailies got a lot better. But you're going to realize, though, like, too, this is um, this movie. Um, there's a lot of ADR in the movie. And but, you know, and it wouldn't be so bad. But the only problem is, is like usually when the ADR is done, you can tell because the thing about David Cronenberg, we've all seen interviews with him. We've all heard, um, you know, audio commentaries, audio interviews with him. His voice is so distinct sounding. You just know. And I'm mean, especially like you watch Nightbreed, you know, where he played Decker his voice is so distinct sounding you know his voice when you hear it so it's like when you hear all this adr in the movie and everything you know it's cronenberg's voice so you could tell it's him uh like there's like one part where dr saint Lou runs he's trying to get away from the zombies and he gets into this he goes into this apartment and there's this old man with this young woman and it's cronenberg's voice you could hear it's like oh have you met my daughter erica and he starts like fondling this woman and and you know feeling her up and kissing her and oh i think you really love my daughter erica Mm, and all this stuff and but um you could tell there are certain scenes they don't really cut together some of the edits are a little jarring but you know but hey it was the man's first theatrical film you know i i honestly think we could cut him some slack and so maybe it's not the most technically proficient of his movies but it's still it's really good it's it's good enough for a first feature i've seen you know first you know first movies from for you know feature films from first time directors that were nowhere near as well done as this one was okay so i think we could cut him some slack on that but the movie is still powerful it's still 
like I said, you know, I don't know if you could even tackle this. I think they tried. I think it was, it was a contracted two, I think it was. But, you know, there was another, at least another movie they tried to do this, but, you know, not as well. But in other movies, if they if they try to do this kind of subject matter, they try to turn it into more. They don't really go into the horror. They just try to make it far more like softcore, you know. But this here, um, it's a definitely unique movie. It's a very interesting movie when you consider the time. Like, this came out at the time where, you know, you had kind of the sexual revolution going on. And, and you know, hey, you know, free love and all this other kind of stuff. But one thing that was really starting to become on the rise was the rise of STDs. And that was the thing, you know, Cronenberg was like, oh, wow, you know, I could make a story off of that. You know, what about this, you know, this? And it, it's actually a very frightening idea because, I mean, look at what we're going through right now. The idea of any kind of parasite or virus or anything that that gets into our bodies and destroys us or, or you know, takes us over or ruins us or something like that. It's a horrifying idea. And especially, you know, it's like, it would be so easy for this this uh, parasite to be, you know, because of, you know, like uh, people finding other people attractive. You know, like I said, there's a scene in this movie where Dr. St. Luke, he's watching Lynn Lowry's character strip. You know, they're done for the day. She goes, she's like taking off her, her nurse's, nurse's uniform and she just looks so stunningly beautiful and gorgeous and, you know, and everything. But he's just like completely oblivious to the whole thing. He's not even paying attention to her. But, you know, like anybody else, like if you're a man, you're sitting there watching, it's all like, oh, my God, you know, if she had the parasite, I'd be doomed. You know, it's like I'd be done for, man. You know, it's like because she could she could, you know, I would never resist her. And because of that, I'd be a goner, you know, that kind of thing. So it's it's very scary. It's very interesting. Now, um, this here, this is obvious. This is the uh, region release. And it's a beautiful steel book. It comes with this little card here for mark of the devil which is one i really need to get my hands on but this one here shows you other uh releases by arrow so but this is a beautiful steel book and you get this you know beautiful collectible booklet which you know the artwork shows you pretty much the most infamous scene in the movie so and it has all kinds of interviews there's you know interviews of cronenberg now here's the inside you know, beautiful you got artwork on the, here's the Blu-ray. Unfortunately, pretty much the artwork on the Blu-ray and the DVD is the same. So here's the, there's the Blu-ray. And there's the DVD. Like I said, they're pretty much identical. Well, almost, almost there. But, but you also get some artwork on the inside of the Steelbook, which is nice. So there's a scene where Tudor is vomiting up the, you know, the parasite, the slug. And uh, really good, you know, special effects by Joe Blasco. But uh, and then here's the outside of the steel book. So, yeah, this is a very nice addition put together. Um, now, a couple of things about the transfer. Now, if you have the uh, image DVD from back in the day. Now, that was uh, that was pretty much uh, put in, you know, cropped one, three, three, one full frame. This here, they ended up they. Uh, you know, they spanned it out to 1781 aspect ratio uh, because they were actually able to get more on the sides and the top and the bottom. So, so uh, yeah, this is a, you know, this is a situation of actually like, you know, rem you know, taking the aspect ratio from full screen to widescreen actually helped it. But um, you also, you get to, you get a number of interviews on here. Let's see here. I wrote them down because obviously but uh, yeah, you get uh, interviews with Barbara Steele, Lynn Lowry, uh, actor Alan Coleman, and special effects uh, supervisor Joe Belasco. There's also other interviews with David Cronenberg, producer Ivan Reitman. Yes, Ivan Reitman, Ghostbusters. Uh, Andre Link, producer John Dunning, and so on. But um, yeah, this is definitely a beautiful addition if you can get it. And uh, like I said, you know, because it's autographed and... Um, Lynn, Lynn Lowry also sent me a poster for Shivers, which unfortunately I can't show. But um, anyway, though, yeah, this is a really good movie. Um, I enjoy this movie a lot. It's a lot of fun. It's very creepy. I think it is. You get some decent gore in it. And uh, it's just, it's an interesting idea. It's an overall very interesting subject. And uh, I would say, you know, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely available on streaming. I know I have it on my Voodoo account as well, but. So anyway, so yeah, just uh, if you get a chance, you know, if you can find this, I say go for it. It'd be nice if, though if they put like a, you know, it'd be nice if we can get, you know, an American version of it too. You know, 
So that way people who don't have, you know, region free Blu-ray players can enjoy it. But anyway, that's about it. So yeah, sex zombies. So check it out, you know? So uh, if anybody took the time to watch all this, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like the video. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. We have a different reviewer for every day of the week. I'm the Saturday reviewer. Uh, we have great guys. Everybody's all doing good stuff. And um, yeah, having fun doing these label weeks. You know, I'm looking forward to see which one's going to be next. Um, we got our theme week, which uh, I think is war horror. That's going to be interesting to do. So anyway, so uh, take care, everyone. Have a good night, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.